Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, P Valley is definitely snatching my wig off uh, with these episodes, okay? <laughs> Don't play with me, ho. Go play in some traffic. Oh. Don't play with me, ho. This shit gonna get graphic. Ooh. They say that I'm the All right, before I get into it, if you wanna see me talk about shows, TV shows, nerdy stuff, superheroes, Game of Thrones, I'm trying to think of what else. I'm doing Westworld too. Um, make sure you go to youtube.com slash avatar Adrian. The link is in my description. We got some fun stuff going on over there. Y'all ready me know. Now, let's just, let's get into this episode, right? So John Clarence Stewart is the talented actor that plays Big Teak. And I just want to say shout out to him because I love the character and I think he did such a great job portraying the character, portraying the struggles that uh, the character was facing. So it's just really excellent job. I want to say that beforehand. Um, I, I guess I'm going to talk about the, the episode overall, you know, because we started out like this and I just want to let the showrunners know that I'm very grateful. <laughs> I am so grateful. I am so happy about it. I was exhilarated. You, you see what I'm saying? So appreciative uh, of this. But yeah, Diamond is still fucked up about uh, Mississippi and I don't blame him. But Mississippi, I don't know, child. You really fucked that shit up. Whatever. So Murder got Tink a new car and I'm just like, yo, can he hook me up? Like, what's up with that? And, it was, and he was, I don't know, was he doing donuts and shit? It was just, it was, it was like a really uh, beautiful moment. I just love seeing the fact that they, like Cliff and them, were making Autumn Night's life hell. Like, she running out the shit. <laughs> she went out the shower because they ain't got no water. I just, I just love it. I'm sorry. Autumn Night annoys the shit out. She annoys me. She annoys me. Even though she did have a win in this episode, like I said, she just she just pissed me off. So the foreshadowing here, a lot of people pointed it out, and I was like, yo. First of all, Big T got his hair cut, and he looked good as hell. I was like, oh shit, he did look good. But then I didn't even realize it when I was watching it, because the guy said casket ready, and I was like, okay, yeah, casket ready. But then someone else pointed out this, you know, the right-hand corner here, um, you know, the devil horns. I was like, it was just it was just so much. It was so layered. But even here, when they're talking outside of the shop, Big Teak ends up, in their conversation, Big Teak ends up saying to Lil Murder, he says this, in life for a nigga stay short. That's why you gotta enjoy every day like it's your last. Where you want me to drop you off at? And I was like, huh? This, at this moment, I was like, what's going on? This was the moment where I was like, what is Big T talking about? What are you talking about drop you off? You acting really weird, nigga. Like, and it was it wasn't even until I rewatched it, I was like, oh, he talked, he literally talked about his last day. I thought this scene was beautiful too because they're sitting down talking, and this is the moment, first of all, where uh Big T forgives, he says he forgives uh La Murder. So that was beautiful. But this, I think, you know, one of the main points of this entire scene was to establish how left behind Big T it feels right because Lil Murder is describing how beautiful he thinks Cliff is and Big T obviously you can see in his face like he obviously thinks the, the the their their interaction is beautiful too but he has to really swallow the fact that Lil Murder has moved on like it, it, the world has, he, Big T also talks about the, how the entire world you know has moved on he just feels stuck and he just feels like he does not belong you know something's missing it, and, and then couple that with all the trauma and stuff, you know, he revisited his his old house and the trauma of being in the hole and in prison. It's just, it was just a lot. And you, you could, I was starting to feel the weight of it. And I already felt it, you know, when, when Big Teak was out, when we were first introduced to his ass, like for real, for real like that in this season. But this was a moment where I was like, oh, it's really heavy. Like, Big Teak is drowning. Like, I saw it. We'll come back to that. Um, my girl, Mississippi, like, I felt so good for her in the beginning uh, when she was packing her shit and leaving. But then when that car wouldn't start, I was like, God damn. <laughs> I was like, I was like, God damn. Like, get my, get my bitch some, get my bitch a break. Get my bitch a Kit Kat. She need a break. Like, please. She was taking the kids. She was ready to go. That car said, that car said, I said, girl, oh my fucking God. I was like, oh my God. I was so pissed. And I was also pissed at how the coach's wife messed up Mercedes' money, but I was still happy at how she stood up for herself in that moment and how Mercedes was kind of helping her ass out too in that moment. The guy, the husband, I don't know, some of these niggas need to, I don't know. He was so pissed. Oh my God, you gave pussy, you gave pussy. You, you got pussy. That's my pussy, that's my pussy. 
Cause I was like, bro, shut the fuck up. And I'm so, like I said, I'm so glad his wife dragged the shit out of him. Like, bitch, we've been married for X amount of years. You don't even know what the type of shit that I like. You don't know what the type of shit I'm into. It's all about you, girl. She said, what about my dreams and hopes? Girl, I'm glad she dragged it. I'm sorry. Real quick, Autumn Knight showing up in this Jessica Rabbit wig. Y'all already know. I was just like, girl, you are so unserious. You are so unserious. She so she showed up in this. She she. I guess she got another identity to get into this damn party, get into this event, and she showed up in this wig. Girl, I was just like, move. <laughs> but she but she ended up like I said, she ended up getting a win for um, I guess her motivations uh, because Miss Mama's over here was definitely on her side. I was just like, girl, give her what she want. Get her out of my face. I just want this casino up. So I wonder what's that, what, what is that going to mean uh, for the pain? This shit scared me because Ernestine over here sick with COVID. It wasn't no allergies like we already knew. It wasn't no allergies. Um, I don't appreciate, like I said, Autumn Night coming in taking my man like this. All the men on the show are mine and I just want, like, I want everybody to know that so that they can keep their hands off my man. Um, <laughs> Mercedes' daughter pregnant. It's just, uh, <laughs> mm. but did this scene here, you know, the main point of the video. It's just so interesting because unfortunately, I have had like some personal experience with this kind of scenario that I'm sure many of you know. But like to watch certain dynamics that felt so familiar play play over again in on on the screen. It was just, it was a lot for me to watch. Um, especially when Lil Murder was like almost like pleading for for Big T to just like stay here, I got you. But you know, it just there's certain things that you can do and you you can be as support for someone who's going through like suicidal ideation, su su suicidal thoughts and stuff. There's certain things that you can do. There's certain, but there's also certain things that you can't. There's certain things you can't control. There's certain things that you can't do. Like sometimes the person that you're talking to or that needs the help needs help help like If you're not a mental health professional, you can't prescribe shit. You can't do shit. You can't give therapy You can't you're not a mental health professional So there's only a certain amount of control that you have over the situation, you know, so I wonder how Laverta's gonna deal with this if he's gonna blame himself, but it's just it, it was just a lot especially when you start to see like someone I don't know, in my case, I saw like the person light up. Like after after months of like just depression, I saw this person light up and smiling all the time, like the, on their last day, smiling. But they smiling and laughing and having fun because they they actually made the decision and they are okay with it now to, to take their own lives. They're okay with it now. And to them, that's a that's an answer to their problems. That's the solution to their issues, right? So now they smile and they happy. So I was thinking, I was like, oh shit, the problem has been solved. Like this person is fine. And they weren't, right? But I did not know any of this while I was going through. It was only afterwards that I was like, oh, okay, putting the pieces together. So I wonder how we you know, as this episode moves forward or as the season moves forward. Like how how the murder is gonna deal with that, right? But yeah, but the way, especially on a rewatch, with with the way that uh, Big Teeth was talking, the things that he was saying, the things that he was alluding to, how weird he was acting with the murder in the beginning, um, he, it's just so it's crazy how many similarities. I'm telling you, it's crazy how many similarities. Like them sitting in the car talking, it's, it's just like crazy. It's crazy. This is why I think that like episodes like this, conversations like this, shows like this. Are so important because there's so many people who are suffering in silence. There's so many people who feel like they're alone in this shit. There's so many people who feel like it's weird to talk about, you know, mental health. Um, it, there's a taboo, mental health stigma everywhere, and so people, instead of like reaching out or thinking that it's okay to reach out, ask for help or whatever, some people they feel like they can't. They just there's no resource. There's nothing. They they feel like I said isolated and alone. So I'm happy that. Even though these conversations were very difficult to have and Pete Valley, like, I, it was just bringing up some shit in me, I'm telling you. Um, but it's just so, in my opinion, it's so important and healthy for us to talk about this out in the open instead of behind closed doors and dark corners and, because people suffer and they fucking die, you know? So a conversation, a, a show, a script, a, a song, anything that could, you know, help someone who feels like they, they in this shit by themselves. I think it's just, it's really important that we talk about the shit, right? So, um, the actor who played Lil Murder, he said, when I read this episode, when I read 206, I cried. Um, I was sitting in Barnes, I was sitting in a Barnes & Noble with my daughter and wife, and we were looking for some books. 
and I happened to read the script and I remember it brought me to tears, man, right there in Barnes & Noble. Uh, then I called Katori and I said, wow, this is a journey. So John and Clarence Stewart, about this entire, about this, he said, I bawled. <laughs> it's a wonderfully heartbreaking complex examination of depression and a man that doesn't have the tools to be in a world that he's been reintroduced to. He's just a really sensitive, poor soul in a world that wasn't made for him. He said on this entire show, like the scene, uh, the work speaks for itself. I think that what we have is an incredibly intimate scene on the back of a devastating trauma and a way that black men comfort one another and love one another in the midst of the hurricane and that's everything. So yeah, just to reiterate, as hard as it can be to digest some of these like topics, you know, it's just, in my opinion, it's, it's so important that it's highlighted because sometimes some of these stories just evaporate or, or sometimes people get a sense of like shame and stuff too, right? Like, especially like I said, regarding the stigma around like suicide and all that stuff. It's almost, you have some people saying like, how dare, that's so selfish. How dare you take your own life? How can they do that to someone? And it's just like, I love that the show handled it with a sense of grace. Like you could see, if you're, at, you could see it on Big T's fucking face in the way that he emoted it just in his eyes that he's at his fucking wits end. It's like, if you're at a place where you think that the only option is to end your own life, there's obviously something is extremely out of place, something is wrong. So I think that that kind of grace needs to be applied to everybody, uh, people who are still here and, and struggling and suffering instead of dismissing them or you know, brushing them off as attention seeking, a lot of people do that, or, or selfish, they need fucking help. You know what I mean? They need the tools and resources to be able to assist them in this crazy ass life. It's crazy as fuck living already. And then you add all the trauma that Big T had on top of it? Like, get out of here. So, yeah, I would love to know what y'all think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that y'all have, please be safe out here. It's crazy out here. Um, and make sure you have a good goddamn evening. I'm a real bitch. These hoes knock off. You want my dick? So, bitch.